Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1, GV Whiskey One, good vibrations at your service. I'd like to describe for you the basic anatomy of an antenna known as a quad. It starts out with a full wavelength loop antenna, illustrated here and uh, about which I made a video a few days ago. Today is the uh, 18th of June, I believe, 2014. A few days ago I made a video about uh, how a full wavelength loop antenna works. The simplest uh, iteration of this type of antenna is a square loop or a circular loop. If it's square, it measures a quarter of a wavelength on each side, and the total circumference <clears throat> of this type of an antenna in feet is approximately equal to 1,000 divided by the frequency in megahertz. That is what you will get when you want to resonate a full wavelength loop antenna at a particular frequency. And when you do that, you will get a characteristic, or pardon me, a feed point impedance that is a pure resistance of approximately 100 ohms, which makes for a 2 to 1 mismatch with a 50 ohm coaxial line or about a 1.5 to 1 or 1.4 to 1 mismatch with 75 ohm line or a 3 to 1 mismatch with 300 ohm balance line. But in any case, it's a reasonably good match for almost any type of transmission line, provided that you're not a perfectionist, of course. <clears throat> so, that is the basic anatomy of a full wavelength loop, and they, that is the starting point for an antenna known as a quad. Now, I also made a video a couple of days ago regarding parasitic elements for antenna systems and the ya Yagi antenna in particular. A parasitic element is just uh, an antenna element that forms part of an antenna but is not connected to the feed line. And the parasitic, the term parasitic, I'm not sure exactly if that's really a very good word for it because it doesn't really parasitic sounds like it's doing some sort of bad thing, but in fact it's doing something that you want it to do. Suppose that you place another loop antenna, like this. Now you're looking right down the axis of the loop. That little green dot there is the axis of the loop. It comes right out at the page towards you, and right back away from the page or screen away from you. So you're looking right dead on into the maw of the radiation and response pattern of a full wavelength loop antenna. Now suppose that you put right in front of this, between the loop and you, another full wavelength loop except you make it somewhere on the order of only 90 to 95 percent the circumference. Let's just suppose for all intents and purposes that a good figure is 92% of the circumference. Then the formula for the circumference of the so-called director, which is what this is going to end up doing, is about 920 over the frequency in megahertz. That is the circumference in feet of the director. You put that between this loop and you, and you're going to get some gain right in your direction. That will produce what is known as a quad antenna. A quad antenna, you put that loop approximately an eighth to a, between one-fifth and one-eighth of a free space wavelength away from this main driven element loop. In front of the loop that is on your side of the screen and so that it's in so that it forms a plane that is parallel to the plane of the loop in other words you're getting two squares sort of parallel to each other and if you imagine use your imagination a little bit you can imagine that it's sort of in the shape of a cube not not an exact cube but a kind of a squashed cube or box 
Now you can also do the same thing, add another parasitic element behind the loop between one eighth and one fifth of a wavelength uh, and make it a little bit bigger. Make it maybe between 105% and 110%. Let's just say for all intents and purposes that you make it 107%. Then the, the circumference of your reflector which is what this is going to end up being in feet will equal approximately oh let's just say 107 percent is that what I said 1070 over the frequency in megahertz now if you have three elements like that a reflector behind the loop the the loop itself or the driven element D E and the director in front of it, the reflector is back behind it, the driven element and the director is in front of it, then you're going to have a three element quad and that type of an antenna can provide several decibels of gain with respect to a half wave dipole. Sometimes in the ideal case I believe up to about 10 decibels of gain with respect to a dipole. That means if you feed a dipole antenna with 100 watts of radio frequency power and then you replace that dipole with a three element quad and aim it both that right out at the screen at you, you're going to get the equivalent of 1000 watts of effective radiated power because 10 dB in terms of power is a 10 to 1 uh, power ratio. Sometime I ought to do some videos that explain exactly what decibels are and how they work with respect to power, current, and voltage because that can be a very useful concept when we're talking about effective radiated power or ERP from an antenna. So it you get about plus 10 decibels with respect to a dipole of effective radiated power and remember that gain is not like amplification. It occurs in this illustration that I've shown you here in your direction but at the expense of other directions in other words it takes power away from certain points in space and adds it on to other points so that you get a directional antenna so not only do you get gain in an antenna like this but you also get directivity both of which can be quite desirable for DX operation in amateur radio applications, particularly at the frequencies 14, 18, 21, 24, 28, and 50 megahertz. Yes, 50 megahertz sometimes is open. <laughs> I haven't heard it lately, but it sometimes is. Stangibalisco W1GV saying 73 for now and so long.